hello friends in this video we'll be talking about babinski reflex and i'll also be telling you about the most frequently asked questions about babinski reflex which are asked commonly in the clinical examinations so first of all i'll uh, demonstrate the babinski reflex and how it is done and what kind of findings you'll get when the babinski reflex is positive Next, we'll be talking about the physiology of Babinski reflex. So, Babinski reflex is essentially a polysynaptic reflex, which uh, indicates a normal defensive response to any painful stimulus. Uh, why it is seen in lower limb is because lower limbs show more of reflex responses and the upper limbs are more under control of the brain. So, upper limbs are less likely to demonstrate superficial reflexes than the lower limbs and it is essentially a triple flexion response towards a noxious stimulus so what happens in babinski reflex is that there will be flexion of the foot on the leg flexion of the leg on the thigh and flexion of the thigh over the pelvis so when you are demonstrating the babinski reflex there are certain prerequisites you need to take care of First of all, the entire leg should be exposed and not only the area of the socks because you need to see the contraction of the ankle, knee as well as at the hip. Secondly, the patient should be supine and the knee should be extended. Third, you have to explain to the patient about the noxious stimuli you are about to give so that you should take the patient under your confidence. Fourth, stroking of the sole should not generate any anxiety, fear or tickling and the limb should be loose, limb should be floppy. So how do you stimulate and where do you stimulate when you are eliciting a Babinski reflex? So you have to stimulate on the plantar surface of the foot on the lateral aspect that is the far lateral side because you have to stimulate in the S1 distribution or the sural nerve distribution. You should begin near the heel and you have to go upward slowly but not very briskly and you should stop short of the metatarsophalangeal joint and turn a bit medially and don't go towards the great toe fully you have to just stop short of the base of the great toe so this is the actual area of stimulation for eliciting a babinski reflex this is the diagram which demonstrates the area of elicitation or stimulation for Babinski reflex. So how strong should be the impulse when you are stimulating for the Babinski reflex? So strength of stimulus will depend actually on the degree of the response. So if you are not getting the response, you may have to apply progressively firmer stimulus. But if the patient is having a fully developed Babinski positive response, usually a touch of finger is even enough to elicit the babinski you would be surprised to know that babinski first observed the extensor response when the wind blew curtains across the feet of a spinal cord injury patient so that is the level of stimulus which is enough in many exams the examiners will ask you what constitutes a normal babinski response and what are the components of the babinski response when you are observing so the components are first the plantar flexion of the toe second the inward curvings of the remaining toes the plantar flexion of the foot the triple flexion response at ankle knee and the hip and the flexion of the tensor facial lata Next very important question is what are the components of a positive Babinski response when the Babinski is extensor. So in that the first component is extension of the great toe, second component is fanning or abduction of the remaining toes, third component is dorsiflexion of the ankle and fourth component is flexion of the knee and hip and fifth component is slight abduction at the thigh and this whole thing will lead to the withdrawal of the whole limb next what is a withdrawal response so in this video you see that the patient is withdrawing his whole limb but you are not able to see any movements of the great toe to decide whether it is babinski extensor or whether it is babinski flex flexor so this is a withdrawal response when there is any confusion regarding inferring the Babinski response and you are confused, always remember three rules governing the Babinski response. First thing is upward movement of the great toe is pathological only if it is associated with contraction of the EHL. So you have to see the EHL contraction or feel it at the dorsum of the foot. 
second rule is the contraction of ehl is pathological only if it is occurring synchronously with the reflex activity in other flexor muscles at knee and hip so this diagram will show you where else you need to see for contraction when you are observing for babinski response and you are confused whether it is positive or negative the third rule is that a true upgoing plantar response is reproducible each and every time you will do it will be reproducible unlike a voluntary withdrawal re response which will tend to vary 